All right, switching gear tomorrow and Friday, the U.S. hosts an economic summit of the world's 20 biggest economies, and climate change will be a key focus as it was at yesterday's special U.N. summit. The president says the U.S. and other nations need to cut greenhouse gases. So how can companies, including Arch Coal, contribute to that effort? Well, joining us right now is chairman and CEO of Arch Coal. He is Steve Lear. He's in Washington, where he spoke at today's National Energy Summit, sponsored by the Council on Competitiveness. Uh, Steve, good to have you with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Carol. Matt, I, how are you guys? We're good, and I want to talk energy policy in, in just a moment, but i got to talk to you about another big event that happened in D.C., and that was the Fed meeting coming out with its decision. I'm curious um, if you think that the Fed is getting things right at this point. They seem to stand put, stand, stay pat rather on interest rates, um, and in terms of their assessment of the economy, hasn't changed all that much. Do you think they've got it right here? I really do. Uh, you know, it's a very tough task, but in, in our customer base, uh, which holds 50 percent of the nation's electricity, uh, we are seeing upticks, nothing robust, but certainly better than the first half of the year. And then if you look at some of our industrial customers, steel plants, uh, other industries, uh, we are definitely seeing, again, some uh, improvement. But, uh, you know, a long ways from where we were, say, in the beginning of 2008. So. Uh, directionally the right direction, uh, but we still have a ways to go, but I feel a lot better about the economy than I did six months ago. I wonder how you feel about natural gas uh, prices here. It's obviously been a problem for uh, prices of your product. What do you think, or how do you see the price uh, action playing out by the end of the year? Well, you know, gas is starting to tick up as well. I, I think both uh, coal, electricity, and gas all suffered uh, this summer from uh, really a demand question. When you look at uh, the, the summer weather, it was probably one of the coolest summers on record, certainly in the last hundred years. You combine that with the, a struggling economy, and uh, we just saw a, a bad downtick, and the inventory is built in the coal business and the gas business. But you have to put in perspective. I mean, the, the coal business in the United States, we sell about one billion tons a year to U.S. Uh, utilities. And we estimate that natural gas displaced coal with its low prices uh, this last year thus far of about 25 million tons. So on the margin, it's an important amount of displaced coal, but at the same time, in the scale of the entire market, it, it's still a pretty small piece. Of course, if you ask the global warming people, they would be pleased that there's less uh, energy used over this cool summer. Um, Let's talk about what you're doing to help uh, fight global warming, and that is carbon capture and storage. We heard about, I think, one of the first plants coming online in Germany, but you're involved in this as well. Why don't you just explain to us what it is? Well, carbon capture and storage is exactly as it sounds, trying to capture the carbon in the combustion or pre-combustion when we're generating electricity or other industrial processes or, for that matter, uh, cars as well, if, if we electrify them, and then storing the carbon. And when you look at it and you look at the global use of energy, the global use of fossil fuels, and the projected use over the next 30 to 40 years, uh, we would argue that carbon capture and sequestration is the only path that we currently see where we can stabilize carbon in the atmosphere. Um, there is no other available technology. There is no other path. If, if you look at renewables in the U.S. today, uh, setting aside hydro, they're about 2% of our electric uh, production. You look at what's happening in the developing world, notably China, India, developing Asia, uh, their needs for energy are growing so quickly and so fast that they're going to dwarf the demand growth in the developed world. And their priorities are different at the moment. They need to electrify their countries. They're focused on poverty. They're focused on clean water and clean air of criteria pollutants. I mean, in many respects, we're watching two billion people go through their industrial revolution. And to stabilize CO2 in the atmosphere, we really have to develop that technology here or in Europe and then share it with the rest of the world. And we're 100% behind that sort of effort. You know, Steve, we talked just briefly about natural gas and the impact it's having on you guys. Just before you go, I would like to get your outlook, though, on coal prices. Well, again, uh, you know, as in natural gas, if you've tracked it or you look at the forward curve, we're seeing some positive movement in, in coal prices. Uh, uh, certainly metallurgical coal has increased uh, both in volume and pricing over the summer. Uh, we're starting to see some uh, 
early signs in the steam markets. We have a large stockpile at the utilities that we have to work through. But you know, when right. you look at global demand in U.S., it's just um, it's growing, and as energy demand and the economy's return, okay. we think coal is one of the main beneficiaries. All right, got to run, Steve. Thank you so much, Steve Lear, right. Chairman and CEO of Arch Coal.